Welcome to worship today at Zion. Uh, good that we can be here uh, to hear God's Word. We receive God's gift of grace through Holy Communion, and everyone is welcome to this table of grace. As we uh, look at our announcements today, um, our third grade children and their parents will begin a, a class with me after our uh, Connect worship service uh, that, that will will provide Bibles to our children. So um, next Sunday, they will be, uh, the kids will be here at the nine o'clock service to receive their Bibles. And I think it's important that, that, you know, we let them know that this is a gift from the entire congregation. So thank you to everyone um, that, that this is just what we do. We promised in baptism that we would place the Word of God into the hands of our kids, and so that's what we're doing. Our third grade class meets today and next week. Um, so uh, keep them in your prayers and, and smile at them when you see them. Uh, that'll be good. Um, flowers on the altar today are in uh, memory of Mary Ellen Leon, uh, who passed away just a year ago. And, um, and so Carrie and Elizabeth are singing today. Uh, in, in her honor, um, as they're singing, just remember their mom taught them how to sing. Uh, and, uh, and it is a great gift to us all. Um, oh, yes, marching band. Uh, I don't know how many of you know anything about the Blackhawks marching band, the, the Baldwin-Woodville marching band. Uh, yes, yesterday was state competition and uh, our kids took first place in the state and they captured three out of the four caption awards uh, including uh, best music, best visual performance and percussion 10 years in a row on percussion. Uh, so a bunch of our kids, yeah. They're, they're on the return trip today. They're on their way home so We'll keep them in our prayers as they travel uh, for safe travel. Uh, Cheryl Slind has an announcement. As it was whispered to me as I walked by, go Badgers. Oh, that was a long game, <laughs> but a good one. Good morning. Today I want to share some very valuable statistics within our congregation the past nine years. This congregation and its many volunteers have served 1,575 pounds of meatball mix. That's the equivalent of 11,100 meatballs, 1,465 pounds of mashed potatoes, gallons, and I mean gallons, of gravy, 375 pounds of coleslaw, 350 dozen buns, 50 cases of lefsa, it's over 7,200 slices, 80 crock pots of rumagret, I really don't think we need to know the nutritional value of that, <laughs> 205 pounds of butter, 166 gallons of milk, but most importantly, we have welcomed over 4,300 people through these doors to enjoy a delicious meal, whether you spend a dollar or 10, it doesn't matter. And to those of you who didn't believe 10 years ago this would work, it's working to continue open our doors and serve our community. I am proud to announce the 10th annual, 10th people, 10, annual meatball dinner will be held Thursday, November 10th. And you all know the routine. It takes many, many wonderful people to make this another success in one way or another. <laughs> I challenge, my challenge this year is to you, those of you who have helped in the past to find one new person, invite them to join this great bunch at here at Zion, whether it's to help out during the dinner or to come to the dinner. I actually have one already. I just mentioned it to a friend and she's gonna come and help, so that's pretty cool. Let's make this one the best year ever. I wanna make a special note that we will open the doors at 4 p.m. And as Pastor said when I told him that, pretty soon we'll be having happy hour at three. <laughs> I have had many elderly people ask for this and we're going to try it. Many don't like to be out driving in the dark, so we'll give it a try. We also hope that it makes the lines less throughout the evening. 
I cannot thank all that participate enough for our continued success in providing a meal for those in the community who may really need a break or for those who just come and support our mission and enjoy a Norwegian dinner. We have also partnered again this year with Thrive in Action teams um, in help paying for the non-donated expensed items for the dinner. Thank you again for making my dream a huge success. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Cheryl. Um, the Rumagrut makes the whole evening my happy hour, so it's, <laughs> that's, that's kind of all I really need. Um, two days after the uh, meatball dinner, we will be tearing the carpet out of the fellowship hall. Take a look at the carpet. It's been there 28 years. It doesn't owe us a dime. Uh, but we will be getting new carpet. And two days after, that Saturday, November 12th, we'll be pulling the old carpet out. So here's what we need is some people with some really good, strong hands that can just go like, Arr! and it should be a lot of fun. So uh, <laughs> I used to do that for a living. It is fun. Um, it's good. So um, think about it, and, uh, and we'll be... We'll be getting in touch with lots of people, but, but we do need good, strong hands, and there will be food and all kinds of good stuff with that, too. We continue our worship as we offer the confession of our sins, and we hear of the Lord's forgiveness. Would you please rise? <clears throat> we are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we continue on page 203. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Have mercy on us, Lord. And hear our solemn prayer. We come to hear your living word. It saves us from despair. Have mercy on us, Christ, and wash away. Let us join. 
join our cheerful songs with angels round the throne. Ten thousand oaths are their tongues, but all their joys are one. prayer of the day is in the worship folder. Please join me as we pray. O oh Lord God, tireless guardian of your people, you are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely day and night on your care. Inspire us to seek your enduring justice for all the suffering world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. first lesson is Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. The second lesson is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting at the 14th verse. But as for you, continue what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it. And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scripture, which are able to make you wise for salvation through your faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that all God's people may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead? And in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this change. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry.
I'm going to have you remain seated, and uh, I'm only going to read a short portion of the gospel this morning uh, because I'm going to be using the uh, lesson that uh, Glenn just read for us from 2 Timothy kind of as the basis for the sermon this morning. But Jesus said in Luke 18, which is the gospel for today, then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. I think that's the core of that gospel this morning. Uh, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. joyful. Thank you. <laughs> a beautiful day to gather together and to share, as Pastor Keith said about the third graders this morning, that uh, receiving <clears throat> that word of God, we're going to talk a little bit about that as we uh, go forward here this morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Words are important. Words are meaningful, enduring, and they give us counsel in our life individually and together. This morning I want to talk a little bit about the importance of words and <laughs> In our daily lives today, and I don't know if it was ever any different, but we hear a lot of words. Words come from here and they come from there. We hear them when we turn on the TV and the radio, uh, the computers, social media, whatever it might be, there are a lot of words which are there. And they are important, but Paul cautions Timothy in our lesson that we need to be careful in making some discernments about the word and not only from our own perspective <laughs> which I tend to like to do I don't know if you do that too but I tend to to kind of filter things in what I as a person like to hear the story of Ole and Lena, who had been married for a long time, 
having a little bit of marital difficulty, so Lena had induced Oli to go to some counseling. And so they were talking with the counselor and, and Lena said to the counselor, well, Oli never tells me that he loves me. And the counselor said to Oli, well, Oli, what about that? And Oli said, yeah, we were married 50 years ago and I told Lena that I loved her. And if that ever changes, I'll tell her that too. <laughs> Maybe we need to hear the word more often. And coming together in worship, we hear the word of God, which is a word of love for us, for the world, at least every Sunday. And hopefully we hear in our own prayer, as the gospel invited us to pray, that God's presence is a presence of love in our life and in our world. I don't know if you read the paper already this morning, but that's what I have ready for me on the breakfast table in the morning. I say my breakfast prayer, but there's a cartoon in the paper today from the family circus, and it's grandma's quotes, okay, grandma's quotes. And the first one, the little boy, uh, grandson, is coming and uh, he goes to his dad and says, Grandma says the future isn't what it used to be, okay? <laughs> the second one shows Grandma with grandkids in her arms, and she says, remember, the best things in life are not things, okay? That's the third. And the third one, which kind of uh, came to me today in regard to Paul's instructions to <clears throat> Timothy as a pastor, the little boy is making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or sandwich and he says, if God lives inside us like grandma says, I hope that God likes peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> okay. The word lives within us and we are a part of that and we, we share that together. In Paul's letter to Timothy, the second letter that we read today. There are three very important parts of that letter. One is that as from your childhood, Paul says, you have grown up in the Word. Now, a lot of us have done that. A lot of us maybe have come in a little bit later in that. It doesn't make any difference. But the Scripture, the Word of God, is important in our life. That's what he says. Why is that important? Well, Paul says, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. Okay, so you've got the word, but it equips us to be involved with one another in positive and helpful ways. That's God's word for us. And the third kind of thing that Paul says in this letter is, be careful, as I mentioned early on, about your preaching and teaching so that you don't only hear it or do it from out of your own understanding, focus, or as Paul uses, desire. So we are a Christian community that gathers around the Word. And for us as a Lutheran community, particularly, that word is the scripture, the Bible. And uh, the written word, which has been passed down from the community of the Old Testament through the New Testament, through the community of the church. And we say that is God's creating and redeeming word for us. The second way that we understand the words, it is the words of Jesus, as we read in the gospel today, the words of Jesus that we can hear in our time and in our place, the teachings that Jesus shares with us, a meaningful word 
to apply to our lifetime experiences as Jesus applied them in his day to the people who came in the cities, along the rivers, and on the mountains of Galilee and Judea. And the third way that we understand the word, not only the scriptures, not only the words of Jesus, but the person of Jesus. God become a human being to live with us in the person of Jesus. The living word, if you will, resurrected on Easter and living with us in the spirit. That's where the young man says peanut butter and jelly. I hope God likes them because God is within us as we gather together here today in person. So Paul is talking to Timothy as a young pastor and at the heart and core of our leadership in our churches with the word is the pastoral ministry. I've been privileged for about 47 years to have been an ordained pastor in the Lutheran Church. Started out in ELC and then ALC and ELCA. This last week, about 45 of us who graduated from Luther Seminary in St. Paul in 1969 met for our 40th reunion. Now, you're doing the math on that, and that's not quite right, but we're doing the 40th reunion for the fifth time. <laughs> okay. I mean, we have trouble counting ahead, but five times we have met uh, every other year. Three times in Tucson, Arizona, and this last two times in Alexandria, Minnesota, at Mark, Mount Carmel Bible Camp and uh, Retreat Center. It was a good time to get together with classmates, some of whom we met in college, uh, some of whom we met at the seminary, and it has been a great time. Um, I say that Joan was able to come along and spouses were there, and uh, I was fortunate that she came all the way back from California uh, to St. Olaf in Northfield, Minnesota, so that I could meet her. And uh, I'm forever grateful for that, that that took place. But we shared together in word and in sacrament and in some input into our experience. The word was present as we were there 47 years later, thinking about all the people in our congregations that we have shared with in that word of God. The written the sayings, and the person of the Christ. It's just amazing to me. Uh, there was uh, somebody there from New Hampshire, whose most of his ministry has been in the East. There was people from the state of Washington, and they came back, and I don't know what they went back to, but I heard there was tornadoes in the area where one of my good friends uh, was from around Seattle. Uh, there weren't people from the deep south, there was somebody from Des Moines, Iowa. That was about as far south <laughs> as, as uh, our class went. We do have some Lutheran churches around. But the reason I say that is to kind of think about the encompassing nature of the gospel which we share. That it is here and there and in a sense everywhere that we might proclaim. Now, there's two things that pastors are called kind of do in their pastoral ministry in, in the center of the congregation. One is the priestly function. Pastor Keith mentioned that this morning. We're gonna share in the sacrament of Holy Communion for the strengthening of our faith for the forgiveness of our sin. The other one I'm doing this morning and that is preaching and sharing that word of God that is at the heart and core of who we are and what we are in order that we may be God's servants in this world. One of my classmates is an artist, a painter, and a visual artist, and he was part of the program and the input that he had. David I. Nelson is his name. He's from the Seattle area, went to St. Olaf College, 
married a classmate. He was a little ahead of us at the seminary, but uh, or at the college, but uh, married one of our classmates there. He's a visual artist in painting, but also in making banners. And he showed us some things that he had done to help proclaim the word in his congregation in Seattle. And they had a kind of a bigger area up in front and, and he showed some uh, huge paintings. I mean, it would be about as wide as, as back and forth across here uh, that he had used at various times in the church year. Particularly, it was one that struck me was the season of Lent and uh, Good Friday and uh, the purple and the, the dark of Good Friday and then the gold and the kind of explosion of Easter. Wonderful visual of God's word in our lives. It was fun to hear that and, and to celebrate together the meaning that that had for us. Well, you can remember back in your connection, your faith adventure, if you will, baptism, Sunday school perhaps, confirmation, okay? And I'm going to ask you, if you will, to turn in your uh, pew, uh, uh, your worship book, okay, to the very back, to page 116. Wait, wait, wait. One one. Where am I? Here? One one six one. Okay. One one six one. One of the neat things, uh, and I've said this before, in our new Cranberry <laughs> worship books is that they have in it Luther's small catechism that probably we studied most when we were in confirmation. Okay. When we were in confirmation, words make a difference. If you'll look there uh, on page one one six one eleven. 61 is Luther's small catechism on the Ten Commandments. The first three are about how we relate to God. The next seven are about how we relate to one another, and words are important. So I want to call attention to the Eighth Commandment. Okay? And uh, the words may be a little bit different than you learn and memorize, but they're very similar. I'm going to read the commandment, and then I'm going to say, what does this mean? And I'd like for you to read with me. I know the words are a little small here, but if you can, try to read those words with me. Eighth commandment. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. What does this mean? We, we are, are to, to fear and, and love, love God, God so, so that, that we, we do not tell lies about our neighbors, about our neighbors betray or, or slander, slander them, them or destroy, destroy their, their reputations. reputations. Instead, we are to come to their defense, speak well of them, and, and interpret everything they do in the best, best possible light. light. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if I do that. And I kind of feel guilty sometimes about that. And I think I learned that when I was in eighth grade for my confirmation confirmed in ninth grade. Maybe you did too. And, and how often do we bring that to mind in our experiences in our world with one another and, and what's going on in the world around us? The one that kind of uh, comes out to me there is to speak well of them and interpret everything they do in the best possible light. Woo. <laughs> isn't that kind of hard sometimes? And isn't that the task that God, through Christ, gives to us to speak the word and the good news in a positive way to the people around us at worship, the people around us in our families and in our community and ultimately in our world? And the word is God loves you. The word as a Christian is that we love you. And the word that we share is the spirit of the risen Christ bringing hope into our lives and into our world. It's not easy 
to kind of be attached to this word. And Paul says, you know, sometimes we think about it from our own perspective. And I think in all the words that are going around now, a lot of it is just from our own perspective. And the way we respond, it, it is difficult. Okay. I've told this story before, but I think it kind of highlights the difficulty of, of looking at things from only for our own perspective or for our own benefit. In North Dakota, the story was going around about the pastoral couple that was out there, and it wasn't Joan and I, but it could have been, <laughs> because uh, she came from Los Angeles and I came from the Twin Cities and we went to Rutland, North Dakota, population 250. Okay. Now that was a change <laughs> in our lifestyle when we came to the seminary. Five years that we spent in North Dakota, wonderful, wonderful years. But the story went around that the pastor's wife was kind of lonesome out there on the North Dakota prairies. And so one day she said, honey, I'm going to go into Fargo and do some shopping. Okay, and kind of want me to feel better. And so he said, okay, I have a good trip, but be careful. Remember, we don't have a lot of money. Okay. So she went into Fargo, was gone for the day and came back at the end of the day. And she said, oh, it was a wonderful trip. And she said, and I bought this. And she brought out this beautiful dress. And the husband said, oh, yeah, that is really pretty. But he looked at the price tag and said, oh, my goodness. He said, I, you know, this is really expensive. And, and she said, yeah, I know. And he said, well, why did you buy it? And she said, the devil made me do it. <laughs> and so the husband said, well, didn't you use the biblical injunction? Get thee behind me, Satan. And she said, oh, I did. And the devil got behind me and said, hey, it looks really good from back here, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, isn't that kind of interpreting things the way we want them to be, okay? <laughs> God's word is kind of that way in our lives, and we, we tend to kind of filter it through our own things. But let us this day... Remember our heritage in the Word. That Word which has been coming down to us through the Scripture. That Word which has come to us through the sayings of Jesus our Christ. And that Word which is living in, in the midst of us through the Spirit. And that that Word is a Word of love. That Word is a Word of forgiveness. And that word is a word of hope. And we proclaim as pastors and people that word to ourselves and to the world around us. Amen.
Christ alone. Give these and then your will be done. Light, we through your Spirit and your Son shall pray. We confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We take a moment to greet one another with the peace of the Lord. Please stand. God's peace. God's peace be with you. We ask our ushers to wait upon us as we share our offerings. Good morning. Hey, Alex. Still and 
communion today. Again, all who are here in the name of Jesus are welcome to receive this gift. Jesus is the one who invites us to receive this bread and wine, his body and blood, for the forgiveness of every sin. Would you please stand as we offer the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took the bread, he broke it and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I ask our, uh, you may be seated, I ask our servers to come forward at this time.
Loving Lord, today we receive these gifts of grace. May we receive, may we rejoice that your love and grace are more powerful than our sins. As we enter this new week, restore our lives, restore our souls. As we are forgiven, help us to be forgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Today we place your holy word into the hands of our third grade children. We ask that you would assist these children and their families to embrace your word and find truth and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As many of our communities, young people and families are returning from state marching band competition, we pray for their safety. We also ask that you would bless the gift of music as we share that gift in our worship. And as Martin Luther once said, when we sing, we pray twice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we lift up our children who are serving in the United States military. We think of Cody, Nick, Kara, Ashley, Tommy, Paul, Thomas, and others we name in our hearts at this time. May they be bringers of peace. We pray for their lives, we pray for their safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also offer prayers of intercession for healing of our brothers and sisters in faith. Those we think of today in need of your healing. Diana, Brendan, Shirley, Bonnie, Rebecca, Cindy, George, Vernon, Jane, Alma, Suzanne, and others we name in the silence of our hearts at this time. May we all be strengthened for your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we offer the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please rise for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace now to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.